Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We don't take this time for granted. This has been ordained by you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. And we give you the honor. For you are a good God and there is none like unto you. Possessor of heaven and earth. We are excited today. We come in expectation today. An expectation that can't be killed is expectation that can't be denied. I sense it in the atmosphere, Father. I, I sense the hunger of your people in person and online. Move up and down every aisle, in and out of every road. Touch, heal, deliver, set free, make whole. Whatever is wrong, make it right. Whatever is rough, make it smooth. Whatever is crooked, make it straight. Now, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. We thank you that revelation knowledge will flow like water, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. If need be, minister through my hands to meet the needs of these, your precious people. We do approach the holy written word of God reverently. We covet the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration as well to assist and to help. I pray that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted Word of God which is able to save our soul. We thank you for deliverance and freedom. We thank you for transformation that will never be the same after today. We give you praise in advance and we cast all care on you for you care for us. We thank you, Father, for this being a time that we live without stress, struggle, or strain. For we walk in the authority as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to your holy name. We pray for every person online as well. Let them experience the tangible presence, your tangible anointing. Even as we experience it here, let them experience it online as well. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Let's just lift up our hands. Come on. Open up your mouth. Begin to worship. Father, we worship you. We praise you. Oh, there's none like to you, Father. We thank you. Oh, glory to your name. Glory, 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 glory to your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Yeah. We give you praise in advance. With the fruit of our lips, we give thanks. You right there, even in your living room, give them praise right now. Wherever you are, give them glory right now. Give them glory. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise them for that friend. Praise them for that loved one. See yourself delivered. See them free. See that situation turning around right now for the good. Glory to God. Now, Father, we bless you. We praise you. We give thanks right now. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. And everybody say amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, let's do this. Love on your neighbor. Introduce yourself to someone. Bless one another. Say, hey, how you doing? Go ahead and smile at them. Show them your... 32s, 24s, 16s, whatever you got. Amen. Just, just love on them and bless them. Praise God. Praise God. I love you. I love you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, 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 well. Amen. As they are doing that, we want to welcome. Oh, we apologize for that. <laughs> we want to welcome everybody. Um, all of our online worshipers with us, we thank God for you. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today. Uh, well, we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared that'll be a blessing to your life. So we want to welcome all of our online audience, as well as everybody. Amen. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. As they're greeting one another, I just want to acknowledge you for our online audience and worshipers. Listen, if you're in the Richmond, Virginia area, we want you to come worship with us for our in-person services. Um, right now, we're doing it. We're staggering our services. We're doing a hybrid model right now, um, but we will be coming more permanent um, very soon. And so if you're in the area, I want you to come on and, and worship with us. You can go to our website at spiritofire.us and get the information there on our web, on our social media platforms. Uh, we're here at the Arts Community Center in the Richmond, Virginia area. So if you're here, you happen to be in town, come on through. We would love to have you. So hey, if this is your very first time at the service here, we just want to acknowledge all of our first timers, whether online or in person. If this is your first time, if you would just raise your hand, we just want to acknowledge any first timers today. No first timers? Any first time? No? Okay. Praise God. Oh, we got one? Oh, amen. Praise God. Well, welcome. Let's give her a hand clap. Praise God. We're not going to ask you to stand or anything. We just want to acknowledge you. We're not going to ask you to stand or anything. You know, we don't want your history, none of that. Don't want your W-2s or your, your, your Social Security number, none of that. Amen. We just want to say welcome. On behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, and Pastor Mike May, we just want to say welcome. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here but we do believe that there'll be a word that'll be shared that'll be a blessing to your life. So we just want you to sit back, relax, enjoy the word, enjoy the worship. Let's welcome our first time visitor, amen. Praise God. Well, I wanna jump into this. You know, y'all know this football season, so you know, but my Cowboys, they don't, they don't play till four or something, so I'm good today, I'm good today, amen. And I really ain't in no rush to see you play right now. I mean, we just, just, amen, amen. I'm just, I, I, I just listen. I'm like Abraham. I believe. I just believe. That's all I can do at this point. I just believe. Amen. So, <laughs> amen. Well, I'm excited today. Um, we're going to jump into the continuation of our series entitled um, The Recovery. And I, I told you all last week we were going to talk about faith to recover or faith to build. No matter where you are, no matter what hand you've been dealt with, you've been dealt, you can succeed in life. From wherever you are right now, for some of you, it's not a recovery that you're believing for. You're just believing as to where I am, just where to build from here, God. Where do I go from here? What do you want me to do? And so I believe this is going to be good today. I just felt something in my spirit this morning. I'm like, okay, y'all get ready. Ain't no telling what's going to happen. So I want y'all to get ready because we're going to get into the word. And I want y'all, and this is something that's very important. Those that are online, those in person, it's so important for you to just pull. I want you to pull. I want you to expect. Expect God to meet you where you are. Expect him to talk about your situation. Listen, I know what I got in the notes, but Holy Spirit knows what you need right now. Okay? And so I want us to, I want us to go, and we're going we're gonna to get into the Word, because the Spirit of God told me, this was several years ago, well, man, probably about a couple years ago now, and I remember I wrote it down. I was sitting at my desk, and I wrote this down. He says, the word is going to sustain what my glory is manifesting. So in other words, you need to teach my people the principles of my word so that the, when, when the glory hits, they won't lose what they get. In other words, so you got to know the word. You got to understand the principles of the word. See, when you understand a principle, principle you can work every time in any situation. Sometimes what people do when they're walking by faith, some people have faith blunders. What do I mean by that? They just stumble across manifestation, but don't know how to intentionally get it. So what we want to talk about is how to intentionally get from I believe I receive it to there it is. Everybody in here, I, I can, how many of you believe in God for something? Amen. You need something to happen. You believe in for a situation. You want things to work. You believe in for greater. And so this message is going to be for you. So whatever you need to receive, you're going to receive it. Um, now, we're going to do this. Um, I got so much stirring up in me. I'll make an announcement. Just remind me to make the announcement out some of later at the end of service. I'll do it at the end. Then before what I was gonna do at the beginning. I wanna make this statement. I want you to listen closely. I want you to make this statement. Say, I can win in life. I can win in life. No matter what hand I've been dealt. No matter what hand I've been dealt. 
Now, I want you to listen to this. I came across something that caused me to start thinking about people who have been caught in scandal in the public eye for different things. And it's interesting to see how some people have recovered and gone on to flourish while others who did the exact same thing have never recovered and seem to have just completely gone from the public eye. Y'all know that. Y'all seen it with different people. And it, it made me begin to think, God, why is it that one person can recover from the exact same situation that another couldn't recover from? And so there are a couple of things that we're going to talk about in how that will begin to take place. I've seen it in faith circles where many great faith leaders who have fallen or they, they, they missed the mark or they've sinned and, and all of a sudden it seemed like they just never recovered from that situation. And, and people have been holding on. Some of you may have been holding on to stuff of past mistakes and past failures and condemnation is a killer of destiny. When Satan hounds you with your mistakes of the past, it'll hold you captive and it'll make you think that you can never recover from what you've been through. I'm here to tell you today that the devil is a liar. Yeah. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. And just like he spoke to David, oh man, I feel it coming on me already. And just like he spoke to David, and David asked God, he said, Lord, David came back from battle and he came back from the battle that Ziglag and he came and all this stuff was gone. Um, family was gone. Stuff was gone. All of the soldiers, their family was gone. Their stuff was gone. They turned on David and they started dogging David out. But David like, wait a minute, I was in battle with y'all. I ain't do this. It ain't my fault. But this attack happened. And so now Dave, the Bible said this, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. When nobody was there to cheerlead him on, nobody was there to boost him up, David had to know that, wait a minute, I can go to a place where I can build myself up. And then he inquired of the Lord. He said, now watch this. David did not just run off and do something haphazardly. All willy nilly, he wasn't in his feelings at that moment. And I know he had some feelings and some emotions going on. If my wife gets taken and kidnapped, if my children get taken and kidnapped, and then you take my stuff on top of that, my cars, my house, my money, my bank account drain, don't you know that could be a distressful situation? If that's a stressing thing. You can spaz out and nobody would blame you. But David did something. He went before his God and he encouraged himself in the Lord. And then he asked the question. He said, Lord, shall I pursue? He didn't just go after them. He says, he, David knew enough to know I need to get wisdom and counsel from the Almighty about this situation. I can't do this by myself. Everybody that I thought was going to help me have my back, they done turned on me. And it just seemed like it's just me and you, God. Have you ever felt like it was just you and God? See, you got, one thing you got to understand, with God, you are always the majority. You hear me? Oh yeah, let me say that one more again. With God. Oh, no, 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 I ain't going to start preaching to you. All things are possible. Watch this. To him that believeth. See, David was trying to get himself right. He was trying to get, if I can get the word from God, I know it's already guaranteed victory. Anytime you hear a word from God, it is guaranteed victory. Some of y'all need to write that down. You need to remember this. When God speaks to you, he does not speak to you for you to lose. Some of y'all, y'all just need to chew on that. Because when God, because God has been speaking to many of you. If not all of you, he always talking to you. He's trying to communicate. He's giving you counsel. He's giving you wisdom. But have you been picking it up? And sometimes we're so clogged with what we're going through. And our mind is so cloudy that sometimes it's hard to get the transmission. That's why God dealt with me and told me to deal with hearing from him first. Because you got to know where you currently are. You ever been to, you ever been, you, you know how you go to a, um, a mall and you go to the map. 
And before you can find out where you're going, you got to first locate where you are. You look for that red dot and say, you are here. So from here, I see that Macy's is over there. So now I'll turn this way and know that, okay, at least I know Macy's is on the other end so I can at least make a cognitive, intelligent decision. Do I want to walk her over there or go back to my car and drive around the other side? Either way, I know where it is so it can help me make a decision. Some of you got to stop and say, okay, where am I now? I know where you want to go, but you got to first locate where you are. And you got to locate what season you're in. Because sometimes based off the season you're in will determine the decisions that you make. Okay, let me break it. Oh, I'm going to break this down. I feel the wisdom of God because some of y'all need some answers and you need them now. Ain't no more time to waste. And uh, listen, you, you've been praying, you done been tithing and sowing, you done gone to this meeting and that meeting and this church and that church, and you've been hearing, your Bible look like a rainbow, you done highlighted so much in it, you, you got notes in your book, all of that stuff, but you still here. Something ain't right with that. Let's dig into it. Because I'm going to be real with you. I, I, listen, I keep it a buck. I keep it a hundred with you. That right now, God is saying, no matter what, man, I sense this thing. I sense the spirit of faith. Boy, who? I, okay. Y'all came pulling today. I don't know who came here. Y'all came expecting. Y'all know we live in this cancel culture. And so many people are so quick to dismiss you if you do or say anything wrong, or they just don't like. Let me say this real quick before I get going here. I didn't even stop my clock, Lord forgive me. But I'm, I already know where I am. You're going to have to learn how to be free from people Amen. from this day forward. You hear me? Truth be told, we all care what certain people think about us. If you just be honest, depending on who the people are. I care what my wife thinks about me. I care what my children think about me. But there are some people you just going to have to block out while you pursuing what it is God told you to do. And this is what God told David. He says, pursue and surely you shall recover all. Not some, but everything you lost is supposed to come back to you. In Proverbs, it says, if the thief be found, he has to return to you seven times what he took. What does that mean? Sometimes when you say, if the thief be found, I start looking deeper into things. Some of you don't even realize what's been stolen. If you don't recognize it's been stolen, you'll never pursue it. God is getting ready. Yeah, I feel that prophetic thing coming on there. I'm telling y'all, online, get ready. God is about to help you recover, but he's about to bring around a second time opportunities that you missed the first time. You better hear what I'm telling you. But you need to be ready for it. When you go to recover, now you got to understand, even when David, well, okay, okay. Even when David went to recover, they found this dude, now watch this. They found this guy that the enemy had turned their back on. And so because they turned their back on him, he was quick to give them up to David and say, this is where they are. They, listen, you're about to make strange bedfellows in these last days. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me drop it like this. God is about to bring you into partnerships that you never thought that you would have with people you never thought God was going to bring you in connection with. When God gets ready to bless you, 
he will use who or whatever he wants to get you to where you need to be. His sole desire is to get you into the path of the good life for your life and for you to receive what it is he has for you. Okay? Now, I want you to do this. And I told you last week, and I don't want to re -go, go over everything. That's why I said y'all go back on YouTube, look at the message, because I, I got to get to some of this stuff. But I got to share this one thing. Remember I told you that one of the number one things that you got to get rid of when you're recovering all is pride. Because you never know who God is going to use to bless you. And you can't already have a preconceived idea of the route he's going to take you. You're going to have to humble yourself and say, okay, I, cause I done been there. When God told me to talk to people, I did not want to talk to. But he was canceling the pride out of my heart. You can't be bitter and be blessed at the same time. You're going to have to forgive. The hardest people, you're going to have to let it go through molestations, through robbery, through betrayal, whatever it is, you got to let it go. Because if you don't get healed here, you'll never be promoted there. Because God will not only protect you, but he's going to protect others from you. Okay. I know we don't like this part, but we got to deal with it. We got to deal with it. We got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. There are things that he's going <laughs> he's gonna to work through you and out of you. And for some of you, the thought of it is worse than the actual acting out on it is going to be. You ever been there where you, you knew you had to do something and it was within you, everything in you cried out, don't do it. You didn't want to do it. But once you finally did it, you realized, hey, it wasn't that bad. I know, the, I know we love the messages when it says God is going to, you know, recompense what your enemies did to you and he's going to be a God of justice. He's going to shut them down. No, but what if you were the one who did something wrong? that you got to go back and correct it before he elevates you. I want to share something with you real quick. Uh, what did I stop last? I want to, um, let, let's start dealing real quick for the faith process of recovery. In Rome is now, remember, David recovered all. But watch this. Not only did David recover his stuff, but he got the enemy stuff as well. I prophesy, I prophesy a twofold recompense of certain things. In other, in other words, how my girl Joyce Myers used to say, it double for your trouble. Let me share this real quick. Let me share this real quick. When the word is preached, remember the scripture even says that Jesus preached in certain places, but it didn't profit the people because it wasn't mixed with faith in those who heard it. The quickness in which you receive will help determine the speed of the manifestation. So be ready to receive. And some things are caught while you're sitting in the atmosphere. It's like a word is spoken and you have to say, I received that. That's mine. That's mine. In other words, I'm expecting when I receive, God ain't a rapist. He will not over. Oh, Lord Jesus. You're going to have to let down the spiritual diaphragm and receive the seed of the word. It's called the sperma of the word. That's what the word seed is actually translated in the Greek. Sperma. It means the beginning of all things, but with the fruit of the harvest already in it. 
So when the seed of the word is released and you receive it, what you're actually receiving is the harvest or the manifestation of the thing you just heard. Okay, okay, yeah, come on. I got to work with you, come on. Because I got to teach you how to walk by faith and not by sight, not by your sensory mechanisms. Go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just start there real quick. Let's start there. Let's start there. Let's start there. Amen. Somebody shout flow. flow. All right. Now, I'm going to read this out of the uh, Amplified Classic real quick. The Amplified Classic. <clears throat> it says this. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact was not revealed to the senses. Let's break this down. Now, now faith. Somebody say now faith. Now faith. See, when you're in faith, you're always in the now. You're always in the present. See, now faith is the assurance. It's the confirmation. It's the title deed of the things we hope for. Let me stop there. What is hope? Hope is an earnest expectation of good. It is, hope is always in the future. Hope has a part to play, but hope is not faith. You know, some people just are hoping and praying. They, 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 they're always putting it off into the future. God will do this versus God has already done this. You got to have a different attitude when you pray. See, when you pray, the Bible says, believe that you receive and you shall have. See, you gotta believe that you have it before you have it. So if you believe you're receiving and you believe you have it, your attitude should match up to your believing. If you really believe it, how come you acting like it ain't, work, it ain't working? How come you acting like, and you so now, you so depressed because I don't know how I'm going to do this, but did you just pray you believed you received? So why are you acting contrary to what you say you believe? See, this is the faith wall. See, the faith ain't for the weak. See, it, it, it causes your strength to come up. See, when you believe God and you trust God in the face of all contradictory evidence, it says now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Now, what's a confirmation? You know, I know y'all have been there when y'all rented a car or rented a hotel room, and they give you what's called a confirmation number. That confirmation number tells you that you either have a car or hotel room that's in reserve for you. Correct? So when you go to the hotel, now watch this. What if you go to the hotel, but they tell you you don't have a room? Right. And you said, they said it with attitude. You showed them that confirmation number. Watch this. And I'm going to help y'all with something. I'm the type, if I got a confirmation, you've already locked me in. You told me I had a room. Now when I show up, you say you don't have one. Whatever you got to do to get me a room, I ain't getting off of this because I got a number that says I got a room here. Or are you the type that just say, well, maybe I just go and find somewhere else. You just leave what you already got confirmation of. See, you gotta learn how to have bulldog faith. Where you lock in and you don't let it go till you see what you believing for. Yeah. Don't stop and say, well maybe it ain't God's will because it ain't happened yet. Can, can y'all handle this, y'all ready? Y'all No, 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 no. I ain't here to play church with you. Too many, too many of y'all have been to places where they're in a hoot hollering, all of that stuff, and you still don't believe, you still don't understand. I'm giving you understanding. Because the Bible says this, when the word is sown and a person understands it not, then cometh the wicked one and steal away that word that was sown. So I want to give you understanding so he can't rob you of what I'm teaching you today. 
I want you to understand this. So when you go out of here and the devil's sitting on the hood of your car to try to contradict what I just poured into you in this service, you're going to have to now protect your spirit, protect your mind and say, no, I believe I receive it. And that is it. Now, how many of you say you believe for something? But now the question is, are you truly believing or are you just hoping it will happen? Hope has its place, but hope is not faith. See, faith takes what you're hoping for, because hope is always in the future. But faith brings it into the now. Okay. <laughs> it says it's the confirmation, the title deed. It's the title deed. See, I don't know if y'all have ever, anybody's ever been in a position where you have paid off something, like paid off a car, yeah. house, whatever. They give you what's a, called a title deed. Until you finish paying for the car, the car is not yours. Right. It's the person that you're paying. It's that bank's car until you make that final payment. And when you make that final payment, they give you what's called a title deed that shows you are the owner of this car or the owner of this house. When you have the title deed, that means you own it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. When you find in the Bible where God has promised you a thing, that's your confirmation. That's your title deed. But watch this, you have to own it. You have to say, that's mine. But faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So no word, no faith. If I was to go down the road and ask, what do you believe in God for? And you said, I'm believing God for this. And then I'll ask the question, what scriptures are you standing on to support what you're believing for? If you cannot show me the word of God that supports or the promise from God that supports what you're believing for, you just have high expectation off of wrong information. No, I can just ask God for whatever I want. He says, whatever things I desire. Okay, but the scripture also says this. This is the confidence in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. But this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears, that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, then we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Jesus said in John 15, if you are 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Why? Because when I abide in him, I abide in his word, which is his will, his will becomes my will. So out of that, whatever I ask, Believe and I receive it, it's mine. Okay. Have you been asking for something? Now watch this. God says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. When you are about, oh man, that's good, that's good. He gives you the desires of your heart, but watch this. God also gives you the desire. When you are abiding in his word, in his presence, and you praying, watch this. That means he'll start talking to you saying, you thinking too small. I want you to have greater and you so fearful because you trying to figure out how you going to take care of it, how you going to pay for it, how, it, how you going to make it happen. When he said, I never asked you to pay for it, I only asked you to believe for it. Ooh, I'm digging in you now, I'm digging in you. Yeah, because see, watch, watch this. That's good. When you put it off, take it off of you and put it back on him, that takes away the stress. God, your word says this. So I believe it in Jesus name. That's it. And I ain't tripping off of it. When it came back and said, no, that ain't my problem. Ooh, some of y'all see some of y'all quit too soon. You got to have some fight in you. 
You got to have some fight. You got to say, no, come hell or high water. This is what I'm believing for. And I ain't getting off this thing. See, see, that's why I say, listen, if I go to the hotel and they ain't got my stuff, I got a confirmation. I don't care if you got to put somebody out their room. You got to build a new room. Whatever it is, I got a room here. I ain't going out of my way to go down the street to find nothing. Well, we'll give you a refund. I don't want no refund. I want my room. See, see, some of y'all can't handle that. Some of y'all, Satan punks you out of your promise too quick. You got to have some fight to you to, to live this life of faith because the Bible says the just, please, I know I'm going to sound like I'm fussing at you, but the just shall live by faith. We're supposed to live by faith. Hear me, we're supposed to live by faith, not just try faith every now and again when we just want something in particular, but we're to live by faith. See, that's why your faith hasn't been developed because you haven't been living by faith. You just tried when some big dramatic thing shows up and your faith hasn't been developed because you couldn't even believe God for the headache. So now when the cancer shows up, it's harder on you. And so it's, hard. it's just like when you go into a weight room. If I've never worked out in my life and I go in and try to bench press 500 pounds, I could injure myself. My muscles aren't developed. Start believing God for the small stuff. Lay hands on your own head instead of grabbing the aspirin. Say, wait a minute, I have authority. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So if I'm dealing with a sickness, I can get my own anointed hands and lay my hands on my own head and I speak to my own body and I can call my body healed. Why? Because I found a promise that says that by his stripes I am healed. First Peter 2.24 said I was healed. So if I was healed, I is healed. I don't care what the doctor said, by his stripes I am healed. But what if? But get your butt out the way. That's the problem. Your butt too big. You got everything in the way. Okay, Lord, calm down. Come on. No, no. I I'm attacking the unbelief. I'm attacking the unbelief. I'm attacking that devil that's been whispering in your ear, trying to talk you out of what God has promised you. And in your spirit, you know God promised you that thing. You know God spoke to you. But all of a sudden, that doubt comes to your head to try to talk you out of what in your heart you already knew. The devil is a lie. And he's been robbing people of their destiny too long. And I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus, you shall not die but live and declare the works of God. You're going to walk in everything God promised you and it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Now watch this. Watch this. This is your opportunity. Just like when the angel showed up to Mary and said, you're going to have a child. And she said, how can this be seeing I know not a man? And he said, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. But watch this. Mary said, be it unto me according to that word. You got to receive it. When Mary said that, that's when conception took place. And the Savior was conceived in her womb. If Mary didn't agree, she never would have conceived. Who Lord. Man, it's strong. Lord Jesus. Come on, Holy Ghost. We walking heavy in here today. I'm telling you now. I see the who when you walking in the spirit of faith, it'll drive doubt and unbelief out of you. You gotta have a tenacity about yourself. You gotta treat doubt and unbelief just like any enemy. Look at your neighbor and say it's time to believe. All right, because God was talking to me. He was talking to me about this ministry. He was talking to me about y'all. He was talking to me about stuff. It was like, I don't care how long it's been. Remember the script. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Remember. Remember the woman. 18 years. 18 years. 18 years she was bound. 18 years. And Jesus shows up and says, woman, thou art loosed. 
The man at the pool of Bethesda, he says for years, I think he was 30 some years. He said, whenever the water was troubled, I didn't have anybody to put me in the water. But Jesus showed up. Okay, do you know who is here right now? I am the resurrection and the life. Whatever is dead, I can bring it to life. Okay, okay. Y'all better get ready for something. I'm talking about y'all receiving it. Y'all hearing what I'm telling you. When God spoke to, we remember Lazarus? Lazarus was dead four days. The Bible, and the people said, surely he stinketh by now. It's almost like, how can he be raised? It's hard enough for me to believe somebody who just died to be raised, but this man been dead for four days, wrapped up in the tomb. You know how gangster Jesus is? He took his time getting there. Just to show how bad he was. Then he says something. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Wait a minute. I remember when the Holy Ghost showed me this. Why did he have to specifically say Lazarus? Because if he just yelled, come forth, every dead body would have gotten up. See, y'all, he pinpointed. He was accurate. He knew what he was carrying. See, some of you haven't been speaking to that thing. You've been letting that thing speak to you all day, and you ain't opened up your mouth once. Okay, okay, Lord Jesus. I, y'all done totally good. Man, Jesus. The Bible says it tells you how to handle thoughts. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing it into captivity to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. How do you capture a thought? How do you capture the doubt? You don't capture thoughts with thoughts, you capture thoughts with words. I want to do a practice with you, real quick. I've been doing this for you. Sit here, everybody. In your mind, I want you to give it a count from one to 10, okay? In your mind. Ready? Go. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. What happened to the count? It stopped. Why? Because you opened up your mouth and you captured the thought. See, you don't battle thoughts with thoughts. And you sitting there and Satan telling you you're going to be defeated. It ain't working. Don't listen to what he's saying. Mm. 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 <laughs> Mm. 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 Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And you sitting there and he kicking your tail in your mind when you got authority all along to shut down that thought. Doctor said you're going to die. Oh, the Bible said with long life, he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. So I declare I live long and strong. They said you ain't qualified for this job. Wait a minute. I trust in the Lord my God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The favor of God is upon my life. The favor of God, watch this, changes policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions. If God wants to elevate me, he said he'll put one down and raise another up. If he want to create a job for me, he'll do it. If he want to bring the raise, he'll do it. God will call, listen, I'm telling you, I have seen this. God will call things. He'll put people out. He'll watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God is so good. Not just putting people out the position to get you in it, but he'll go ahead and remove them, give them another job so they can still flourish to open up a door for you to come in to elevate your income to now qualify you for what you've been believing for and the whole time you've been trying to figure out, listen, I'm telling you, I can, pro listen, I can testify this. God supernaturally brought up our credit score 100 points one time out of the blue. I ain't do nothing just to get us into the place and as soon as we got into the place, it went right back to what it was. <laughs> I am not, am I lying? I am not lying. My brother had testified about the same thing when they got their house and said God did the exact same thing for him just to qualify them, just to get into the house and he did the exact same thing for us. Don't you tell me God won't change things just to get you in position of where you need to be. Not only that, he began to give us raises and bonuses on our job when pandemic
big hit. He started doing stuff. He started bringing increase just out the blue. And I'm telling you, God says, I want to do the same thing for you. No, 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 no. He said, ooh, you better get ready. Because he said, I'm about to do something so extravagant that it will almost take your breath away in the sense of, God, you are so good. You mean to tell me? God said, man, he, he about to, you better hear me. He is about to bring you in the stuff you don't qualify for. You hear me? I'm telling you. Shelly. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, think it not strange. I'm going to go ahead and give you my King James version of it. Think it not strange when stuff started turning around that you didn't even ask for. He said, I just love you so much and you've been so good and so faithful to me. I just want to dump something on you that I knew you would like. See, I'm, I'm about to mess with some of y'all. Some of y'all don't even believe that you can have that. You so you just trying to struggle with getting what you need. God says, ooh. He says, I'm about to swallow your needs and your wants. Some of y'all ain't get what I just said. I want you to meditate on that. You just been believing for what you need. When you start believing for what you want, it'll swallow up what you need. He says, come up hither. Come up to the throne of grace. Come up where kings reside. I, I want to say something, but I ain't, I ain't taught it to you yet to say it out of my mouth just yet. Oh, because I don't want you to say I'm blaspheming God in any way. He said, did I not call you gods? See, you got to understand, you've been made in his image and after his likeness. You are from your father. Just like Jesus, your big brother said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. See, when we conform into his image and after his likeness, when I start growing up in him, I can come and say boldly, if you've seen Mike, you've seen the Father. See, 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 I want y'all walking heavier now. God says, I am building up an army who is going to trust me for things big. You better hear me. There's a group coming up that they are here now. He said they are so ready to overtake and to possess and to have dominion. And you are part of that group, says the Lord. You are part of that group that shall conquer. You are part of that group that shall lead. You are part of that group that shall overcome. I'm telling you, you are about to conquer. Listen, I'm telling you now. Hear me. Hear me. If it does not come to pass, I be not a prophet of God. In the name of Jesus, we are about to conquer and pursue kingdoms in the earth. We are about to overtake areas and God has already strategically positioned people that you are not even aware of who are believers. But when the time comes for them to reveal themselves, you will see that I've been putting them here and putting them there and I've been working on your mindset and your spirit because I'm about to bring opportunities. You better hear me. I'm about to bring you opportunities that you felt like you were not qualified for, but I will build you up to handle it. I will build you up to handle it. You hear me? I hope y'all receiving this online. Y'all, boy, y'all better be receiving this thing. Lord Jesus. This thing. Get my, my rag out of my bag, please. I'm telling you. See, I may not be for everybody. Honestly, I'm thinking I'm ready. I'm for them people that's ready. It's like you ready. You already come to the Jordan. It's time for you to cross over. I don't care how long it's been. God is still a God of acceleration. God can cause you to catch up to where you should have been. 
Do you receive it? Do you believe it? Shele bashokona la masete lola basete masete le masekana ne shetala besete. Now I don't speak this out of out of for the basete preference or favoritism, but I declare. He says everything you spoken that there should be lineages, there should be yet the bashekene. Your children and your children's children shall be blessed for every faithful thing you pray, every seed that you sown, everything that you spoken in times past, and it shall come to pass. And you shall be here to see it. And you shall be here to enjoy it. And I declare the strength of God over you. I declare the wisdom of God over you. I declare the might of God over you now. And it shall come to pass. And every person, ooh, ooh, ooh. And every, oh Lord, I hear that. Ooh, Jesus. And every person who thought that you were stupid to stay with dad, who thought you were stupid, he said, he said, did I not say that the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the believing wife? And because you stuck with him, he made it into heaven. And God is saying, I'm going to reward, glory to God. I'm going to reward you for this. Glory to who, Jesus. Who, Jesus. Man, my God. Y'all got to, y'all got to. This thing's strong. This thing's strong. This thing's strong. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This thing. Woo! You're up. Woo! Jesus. Glory to God. No, see. See. Father, I have spoken your word. And you promised that you would confirm it with signs following. Glory. Woo! Glory. Woo! Glory. Glory to my God in heaven. Shh. Jesus. This is that. This is that. This is that. This is that. Which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is that. For we are in these times. For we are in these end times and you're going to see visitations like you've never seen, says the Lord. There'll be greater dreams and visions manifesting to you at an accelerated rate. So listen, yeah, don't think it's strange what you begin to dream about. Things that begin to come up in your spirit. Things that you are thinking that you're just daydreaming. But it's me showing you your present and your future. And you will think it's deja vu moments. But he said it's me showing you and giving you glimpses into the future. Did I not say the Holy Spirit will show you things to come? He'll show you things to come. He'll show you things to come so that you can even prepare for it. So so get ready for your harvest, for it is your due season, says the Lord. This is your time, for whatever you set your hands to will work now. I don't care if it didn't work in the past, but my grace is sufficient and is upon you to get it done now. And you will see it, and I'll bring people from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and they'll assist you. People you thought were least likely to help you, but my hand of favor will come upon them, and they'll say things to to you that I don't know why I'm doing this but I feel compelled to help you he said that is me that's the unction of my spirit that's your angelic forces at work bringing you into contact with the right people at the right places at the right times and there'll be such an ease for the enemy oh Lord shekan. yeah for I hear the screams of demonic forces because they cannot stop the flood of my power and of my grace upon your life. And whatever tries to stop you will be removed from you. And I'm telling you now, you get ready now, for you're gonna see my goodness. You're gonna see my handiwork. You're gonna see it. Yeah. He said, it's time to believe me for it. I personally believe, and this is me speaking here, I personally believe that we're about to see, I like to call it, it's almost like a spirit, of, for some it's going to be a spirit of ease. I've heard some people preach against it. They're so busy trying to preach the sufferings of Christ, and you done suffered long enough. It's time for you to reign in his glory with them. Huh. Uh-uh, uh-uh, 
This is why you've seen great transitions of many people, many who have died, even showing that there's about to be a birthing of the new. And for those that have passed, many are receiving their eternal reward. And you are seeing now, I'm telling you now, you're going to see more deaths in the times to come in the public eye. You're going to see those things, but don't let it trouble your heart. For you, for my church, it should be a glorious coming forth. And there are going to be many that I'm going to be bringing up. It seems like out of the pit, out of dark places, and I'm going to put my spirit within them. And there should be young men and women that shall come forth and prophesy for me. And there will be many that will go into the marketplaces. And you're about to see a great expanse in the marketplace. You're about to see kingdom entrepreneurs like you have never seen before. And there will be this blending of the kings and the priests coming together. Those that are in touch with me and those that rule in this market arena. And he says the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of your God and you shall see many others come to pass and there's about to be a great uncovering even in political arenas where there are those who've been covered about to be exposed watch it's already happened he said this this is the second or third time Lord oh Lord this is the time to judge yourself At least you be judged Judge your motives. Correct yourself in private so God won't have to do it public. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is who? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Lord, glory to God. Young lady, the Lord brought you here today to hear these words for whatever it is that you need in your life. As you submit and yield to him and yield to his plan for your life, he says, I'm going to rearrange everything around you. I'm going to bring the people around you, the family, that even those that have betrayed you, they'll apologize to you. They'll come back. And he says, I'm going to bring great restoration to your life. And there's going to be such a peace and such a joy that the joy of the Lord is going to consume you. And you're not going to deal with the depression. You're not going to deal with those hounding thoughts in your mind. Yeah, you will not die but live. No suicidal thoughts, no suicidal ideation, none of that stuff. The glory is upon you. And God is saying, I'm, yeah, you foul spirit that has harassed her. I take authority over you now. You will not come and harass her, not one split second further, in Jesus' name. Yeah, I've been watching you, and the Lord is like, he's been working on you this entire time. And sometimes you try to cover it up so people can't see what's really going on on the inside. He said, but this is going to be a time where it's going to be true joy, true laughter. And when people see you smile, you're going to know it's not, I'm not putting on a front, but this is legitimate. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can, would you allow me to pray over you real quick? Come here, come here, come here, come here, real quick. Come here, precious. Now, this is sealing this thing. As a man anointed by the Spirit of God, I speak the protection of God over you. I speak the peace of God over you. I declare that all will be well, that your hands are anointed and blessed. I declare favor over you, a hedge of protection. I speak over you now, in Jesus' name. Let me walk around. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody may say, what in the world is he doing? I'm being led by the Spirit. He says, walk around her, a hedge of fire, in Jesus' Who go in the name of Shete Masata? Yes, yes, yes. Who glory to God? Who Jesus? We coming after you, Satan. Uh huh. Yeah, Lord, I got you. Mm -hmm. We raising up an army here, Spirit of Fire. We raising up an army to go into the earth. We going into the earth. We are going into the earth. You hear me? Yeah, ain't no more. Yeah, we ain't playing no games. We coming with the spirit and power. We coming with the word and power. Glory to God. Whew. 
Tell the apostle I'm coming to meet him soon. It's time. Glory to God. This thing's strong. This, 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 whoo, this authority gonna grow. Y'all gonna see greater manifestations. Not only this, y'all about to walk in this. Y'all gonna walk in this, I'm telling you. You gonna walk in this, girl. I see you. I see you. I see you. You getting so hot with the devil. And I mean, you binding and loosening and casting out this fire. That's girl. You just, come on. Come on. You need this anointing. I'm about to now. You're going to begin to grow in this. And I'm, I'm here there by the bush, here there they get there. Lift up, yeah, da 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 bo se cane. Na 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 man, na mo na male be de ve de cane, na 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 satana, no se tene. Na satana mo comate ke basata. Mate ke le bo shoto. Nigana, na na, na na. From a child, I've been showing you things. From a child, I've been revealing things to you. Woo! Yeah, let the spirit of fire. <laughs> Woo! Glow. Woo, Jesus. Woo! Glory, glory. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Yeah, Dalla Masata. Yeah, and you will speak the word, and it'll come out like a sword, and it'll come out like fire. It'll come out like fire, fire, fire. fire. Glory to God. And I hear this as well. There have been many ministries like this that people have put to the side, have not been prominent, but they're coming to the forefront. The anointing of God is about to manifest stronger and the Holy Spirit is about to invade like you've never seen. Yeah, I'm telling you now. He's about to arrest many preachers and the fire of God is gonna hit many pulpits and it will be a blaze. It'll be a blaze. Ooh. He said, ooh, God is a consuming fire. Yes, yes, yes. And fire by nature, it consumes and devours. The fire of God is going to hit people's lives and devour, devour the sin that's been in their lives. Yes. The stuff that they've been struggling with yes. is going to hit. I'm telling you, there's going to be such a purification in the body that's about to hit. Hallelujah. Pastors that may be listening, when the Holy Spirit, this is the second time I'm sharing this, when the Holy Spirit begins to manifest, don't stop them. The people, I see it, I see it. They'll hit the altars, they'll hit the ground, they'll hit the floor in worship. And some of, some of the priests will try to gain control of the environment, but it's gonna be so strong. That they're gonna be just like, okay. You, you gonna... Oh, yeah. Oh, I pray over every pastor that has struggled in private. As Shetene matana motele. Shekanda, every chain shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Le compre sakanda, lore machende, landana, manifest yourself to them, Father. Ooh. There's a high percentage. I sense this thing strong. They're struggling with things behind closed doors and there's gonna be such a freedom and such a fresh wind of my spirit that shall hit this place. Whoo, I keep hearing the Eastern seaboard and it'll flood and it'll go and it'll go. Whoo, glory. Mm -mm. Oh man, you, Y'all remember this, remember this day. September the 18th, 2022. The revelation of my grace will flood and go into places that you never thought it would. And many will begin to catch on. And they'll begin to preach it. Because they didn't understand it. 
but enlightenment will begin to come and I'll begin to deal with them about their stuff. Who? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shake on an amount. Shale basatan. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Who she cream us at the bridge to go she down? Who? Wherever you are watching, receive. I know some of y'all, y'all, this anointing is hitting you where you are. Some of y'all at home crying. The anointing coming through. Mmm. Mmm. Hey. hey. Ooh, Lord. Lord. <laughs> Ooh, glory. Man. Glory to God. I know some of y'all watching, you, you can't see everything, but it's, the anointing is in this place. It's in, the presence of God is in this place. We have many lives we have to impact. We got to train and teach them. Train and teach them. Come here, Pam. Here's another dose. Shekrama sete lebana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The anointing of the teachers on you. Bithekane mbo setane ma fete la ba setene, bra setana, shakala ma setene, mutakala ba setene ma setana, mukana na mana me setene bra setana. Yeta la ba soto ma setande. And Father, let this grace rest upon her. Let her walk in it. Let her carry it back everywhere she goes. The word of wisdom, word of knowledge, let, and the discerning of spirits, let it be upon her from this day forward. Let God not let her begin to see into the spirit realm and see the things that are binding people. Yeah, up oh, for the purpose. Ooh, y'all stay with her. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh. Even in the school systems, even as you talk to students, even as you talk to teachers, even as you talk to administrative staff, the wisdom of God will be upon you. The might of God will be upon you, but the conviction of the Holy Ghost will rise up strong in you. And when that boldness rise up, you'll know it's time to speak. He'll show you when it's time to speak. He'll show you exactly when. Hallelujah, glory. Ooh, it's gonna come upon you strong, it's, yeah. And your private time, you just be out on your face. And it's like, it's like God has come and see, that's how strong you want it. You've been hungry and you've been asking him for this. He said, I've been hearing everything you've been asking me for. And it's time now. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like him stop himself coming in your room. I've been there where I could sense a person in the room. It's so strong. That part of me was even afraid to open up my eyes to look because I thought of what I might see. But as I, yeah, as I went after him, he says, draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Yeah, girl. La grana, shotone. Ooh, crowned with goodness. Crowned with goodness. The goodness of God be upon you. <laughs> the goodness of God. Now what's gonna come with this is an anointing to prosper that you didn't even ask for per se, but it's going to, you have to. It takes great resources for what I'm telling you to do. You're gonna need plenty. Yeah. And it shall come to pass and you shall have all of it. It's done. That's a done thing. That's a done thing. It's a done thing. All right. Whew, Lord, okay. I'm going to get shut this down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, y'all, we want to work on that.
Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Whew. Man. Ha. Ah, glory. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say this. Say, for the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Say it again. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Praise God. Now, every head bowed, every eye closed. Those that are watching online, I want you to be sensitive to this. I want my, all of my believers praying and in intercession. If you're here or online and you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to give you an opportunity to do so today. The Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, when you believe in your heart, Jesus now has taken your sin and given you his righteousness and make you in right standing with God from this day forward. And that's the beauty of it. He says, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So even as you begin to pray this prayer with us and confess, but even after praying this prayer and receiving Jesus from this day forward, with the mouth, confession is made unto your soteria, which is salvation, your healing, your preservation, your wholeness, nothing missing, broken or lacking. Anything that you need in life can now be accessed through the vocal, man, I tell glory to God through you speaking life over your situation, for you speaking life over everything that's happened. You can speak your salvation into existence. Yeah, this is what God's, let God be true and every man alive. I don't care what other people have taught against it, God's word is true. God's word is true. Now, with those that's here and those, if that's you, if anybody here has never given Jesus the, uh, <laughs> give your life to Christ, I just want you to slip up your hand. Is anybody here? Anybody here? Praise God. All right. But now for those that may be online, I want you to pray this prayer of faith along with everybody here. Just say to say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen. You're born again. Born again, yeah. The Bible says this, all, this, all of heaven rejoices over one person giving their life to Christ. So listen, I encourage you, if you're not a part of a church, get yourself in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church that will train you and disciple you in the Word of God. I recommend this ministry to you. Listen, we're working on our e-church to build it up, so we have members that are in other states as well, and so we thank God for you showing up. If that's you and you want to connect with us, you can send us an email at connect at spiritoffire.us. Connect at spiritoffire.us, or you can simply send us a message. DM us on our um, social media platform and somebody from our Connect team will get with you. Praise God to connect with this ministry. Also, we pray if you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, listen, we want you to, to go ahead and contact us. We'll have one of our prayer counselors pray with you. We'll pray with you if you want to. You can connect with us, um, contact us. Our number is 804-792-0733, 804-792-0733. And if you need to leave a message, somebody will get in contact with you to help pray with you about your situation. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Um, for showing up today, and we do believe that the best is yet to come. Let's give them another hand clap, everybody. Let's celebrate for those that may be online doing that. Listen, I also give this opportunity as well. 
for those that have never experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. If that's you and you've never experienced it before in your life, but you want to today, you want to receive this third person of the Godhead. Jesus said, but you shall receive power. Somebody shout power. Power. He says, well, power. He says, after that, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. He'll come and be upon you. He'll help you to be a witness for the Lord. I'm telling you, after Jesus, he is the best thing that has ever happened to my life. I'm telling you, at 16 years old, I remember going to this side room, Reverend Leroy Banks at Richmond Christian Center. He led me in this prayer, and man, I lifted up my hands, and man, listen, when it says, out of your belly shall flow, I literally sensed the power and felt the presence of God flow out of my belly, and I began to pray in tongues like I've been praying for years. It just came through like a rushing river, boy, and I'm telling you, two weeks later, I remember receiving receiving a prophecy from a youth pastor that he began to prophesy over my life, and everything that he prophesied has come to pass, every single word of it. And so I'm telling you, God is real. You can't talk me out of it. Listen, he, I, listen, I have had a personal encounter. It ain't based off my mama faith. I thank you. Listen, I'm glad she made me go to church. That's how she did. She had three boys. We had to go to church. They won't know. Uh, I'm glad. Why? Because it positioned me to receive the word, to hear the word. And I remember, I'd be out there hearing my pastor preach, and I'd go, I said, Lord, pastor said I could do this, so I'm coming. I'm putting you in remembrance of your word. I went to God just like that as a teenager. As like, you said that I could do this? You said that you'll speak to me if I come and acknowledge you? You said that you'll use me like this? So I'm coming to you right now in the name of Jesus, and I believe this thing, and I'm telling, man, who glory, man, he, t- whoo, Jesus. <laughs> He touched my life, man. It's a personal encounter. You can't tell me he ain't real. I know him. You hear me? I know him. Glory to God. Okay, I might just, man, I feel I'm about to pass out myself here. Lord Jesus. Whoo, glory. Glory. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. There may be somebody here. I don't know. You just want me to pray over you and bless you. If that's you, just come on up. You just want me to just pray over you. I'm not, I'm just asking. I'm just putting it out there. Hmm? Just face me. You can just stay here. Y'all help your other brother as well. Now, in the name of Jesus, I bless you, man of God. I speak peace and life and strength over you for the job and the task at hand. In the name of Jesus, glory to God, I bless you. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Just real simple, that's all. Just, just to bless, just to bless. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing. Yeah, and I knew you were supposed to come up. That's why I was like, yeah. Because you got an assignment. I know your pastors have blessed you. You have awesome leaders. This is just as, as an addition to, to just bless you. As a man anointed by the Spirit of God, may God's grace and peace be yeah, heavy upon you. Let great clarity come as to your next assignment to the thing that you need to do next, your next, your next step, your next instruction, and let you handle it well. Great wisdom be upon you, my sister. Great wisdom, let the spirit of wisdom be upon you to handle. And Satan, yeah, yeah, I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your naysayers will be able to gainsay nor resist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great wisdom, and it'll flow out of you like water. And you'll be shocked, it's like, where did that come from? You know where it's coming from. You know the Holy Ghost in you is telling you. But even people around you, man, girl, what's happening to you? You growing, you growing, you growing. And great wisdom will flow out in Jesus. Ooh, ooh, ooh girl, you a sponge, Lord Jesus, man. Goodness. So you gotta know how to be, be ready to receive. She know how to receive. You, you, you've been trained well in the spirit. I can sense that. Yeah, you've been trained well in the spirit. All right, girl. Yeah. You've been holding back to a degree. Yeah, and it's time to let go. 
Just let go. Let go. Let go of the fear of rejection, the fear of hurt, the fear of pain, the fear of you revisiting the past. That it, not, it will not be that time this time around, that way this time around. Yeah, my hand is upon you. I'm covering you and I'm gracing you for this thing. And it's going to begin to grow and grow and grow. And the anointing shall increase on you. The prophetic anointing shall increase. Prophetic psalms, 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 psalms. Hymns and spiritual songs making melody in your heart. Yeah, to the Lord. Out of your belly shall come. Yeah, songs and books. Yeah, yeah. Your publishing rights. All of that stuff. Everything, everything. You're going to write for others, a psalmist, and many going to come to you to get, yeah, Shekana. They're going to come to you to write. They're going to come to you to collaborate. Now, great favor, favor on you now. And glory to God. Yeah. Where you connected does matter. We declare favor in Jesus' name. And we watch over your soul. We watch over you. And Satan, you cannot touch her in Jesus' name. In any way, shape, fashion, or form. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. We pray a hedge of protection and fire upon her, upon her home, upon her ministry, and all that you call for her to do. Let her ears be open. Let her ears be open in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And she will hear clearly. She will hear clearly and have clear direction in Jesus' name. Now somebody, somebody may be watching and saying, why is he doing all this stuff? I just go what the Holy Ghost told me to do. Sometimes what the prophets mention, we do crazy looking things, it look foolish, but I just go with what God showed me, what he told me to do. And so, amen. Hallelujah. Woo, all right. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Huh. Did you want me? Oh, oh, oh. All right, man of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He said, you already got this. You got it. You got it. You got it. The blessing you've been seeking, you already have. He says, it's time to walk in it. You won't see it manifest until you step out. That's what that is. You won't see it until you step out and obey the word of the Lord that was given to you. When you step out, you're going to see it. He's going to manifest to blow your mind if you just step out and do it. I told you it was going to start. It was going to be a chain reaction. But you got to do the first thing. If you don't obey, you'll never see the fullness of the blessing. Obey. Press through and obey and watch the floodgates open. I promise you in Jesus name. Mm. Ooh, glory to God. Mm -mm. The men are coming. The men are coming. The men are coming. Man, I hear this. Who? I hear this. They need to be trained. Oh, trust me, the women coming right when? But we're going to train them. Yeah, 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 yeah. This thing. I'll speak it. The prophets are coming out of this house. The ministry gifts. They're coming out of this house. The ministry gifts to be trained, to be deployed and dispatched into the earth. We're going to need to talk soon about some things. We're going to need to talk. You were on my heart the other day about some stuff. I'll talk to you later. Glory. Mm. Glory. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to get out of here. Amen. Glory, 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 glory. Say about this shit to Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Did I miss somebody? Did I miss anybody? Oh. All right. All right. She broshe kona sana. Halaba setene masakana brosetene. Halaba shotona brasetana. Y'all just stretch your hands for it. Please. This is an agreement. Father, in the name of Jesus. Sherema Shatana Brosekana. Halebra Shetena Mbasetona. 
Now, I'm telling y'all now, this anointing is beginning to wane a little bit, but in, by faith and in agreement, I release this anointing to flow from the crown of his head to the soul. He just wanted a double dose. He just wanted a fresh. That's all. He already got it. He already got it. He already got it. Man, you've been following me this long. It's already on you. You've been walking in. You've been walking in. You've been walking in. Come on, come on, come on. Since you ain't come up on your own, I'm going to call you. Come on. In the name of Jesus. You're not running from the vision. Sometimes you're running from you. What all that you can be. Because everything you don't understand up here yet. He says, don't worry about it. You're going to understand in due time. You're going to understand the power. You're going to understand the anointing. This is a time of great training for you, son. For you to walk in the thing that God called you to be in, to be proficient. Don't ever worry again. You are graced to be a leader in your home. You are graced to be a husband. You are graced to be a father. Don't second guess my wisdom that's in you, says the Lord. The things that I'm bringing up in you to do, he says, trust yourself and trust your wife. Y'all going to do it together. You don't have to carry the weight of it any longer. Ooh. He said, you ain't your provider. I'm your provider. All I need you to do is to come to me and provision will be released to your family. Whatever you need. Come on, Sharice. Come here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You need to stand beside him. Mm-hmm. You need to let it go now. Yep. Mm-hmm. You've been holding it in. It's okay. It's okay. Great peace. Great peace. Great peace. You're coming into your own now. You're growing. You're growing. You're growing. You're growing. You're growing. Yeah. And I affirm you in Jesus' name. All is well with you. All is well with it. You've been carrying a lot of pressure. You've been carrying a lot of pressure. Just let it go. You'll start sleeping better. You'll start resting better now. Just go. I got you. He said, I got you. I got your family. Over to God. Over to God. Listen, being a man is being vulnerable. It's okay. It's okay. You got to let it go. It's okay. I've been there. I know that weight. I know that pressure. Shoot, I had two babies at one time. They just came out the blue. <laughs> and the family. I'm like, Jesus, what are we going to do? But he always provided. I mean, stuff we ain't had to pay for, almost nothing. God is a provider, man. He just, that's what's going to really break you. He going to overrun y'all with his goodness. Woo, yeah. <laughs> Woo, man, I felt that thing. Oh, my God. Woo, Jesus. God, I felt that thing. Man, yeah, that, that's, yeah, I felt, my God. Glory to God. My goodness. All right, I'm going to say this and I have to close. I don't have to close. I'm going to have to close. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being more mindful. The Lord dealt with me about, he says, you've been functioning as a pastor for so long. I need you to come out of that office into the office of the prophet. I need, to, I need you to put the prophet's ministry yes. forefront. Yes. 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 Um, because there are people that I need you to speak over. Yes. And he began to show me how strong and how heavy my words would be yes. in people's lives. And we have to take this anointing all over. He told me to build locally, but to think globally. And so we need to go help as many people. And I'll share this now. He <laughs> yeah, we celebrate with you. <laughs> Glory. I want to just put this out there. I told my wife, I was taking a shower and I just began to hear some things. And one of the things, it was like, begin to just to, to compel the people, whether they're watching, they come in person, whatever. Um, we've been doing this hybrid model for just a little while now, some in person, some online. Um, but we're about to become more in person, more steady basis. Hallelujah. But we need to begin to build our team. 
of people. So we need help in areas, whether it's in music, we need singers, um, ushering, media, administrative help, um, because it's a, it's, a great, it's a great work he's called us to. Um, but we need the help. And you can only go as far as your team. You can only go as far as your team. And if God is leading you in any way and you feel you bear witness with it, you said, we want to help in any way that we can. We're going to have, I don't know, did you bring them? There's a sign-up sheet. And if those online, if you want to send us a message to say, hey, we can help in any way we can, um, but we need to begin to come together, do our trainings, meetings, things of that nature. Um, it's like I keep, I keep hearing this time. I keep hearing this time. Um, because something, I just sense it. It's, this was a foretaste. And it's like you need to carry this anointing. Huh? What? Oh, okay. Right. And you don't have to be a member of the church to help. As we have people who've joined and submitted to us as their pastors, but there are others who've just helped. You just love the ministry. It's been a blessing to you. You still remain a member of your church, you know, and we're not trying to take you from your church, your pastors, because they have a work and you need to be there for them to supply and support. Um, but if and as you're led, you want to be a partner with this ministry to help us to get the job done. Sometimes God brings scaffolding in your life. You know, scaffolding is just to get the building up until you get things straight, then the scaffolding is removed to help. So now it's self, self-functioning and self-sustaining. Um, and we understand that, but God is doing something. This is a fresh wind that's hidden. I'm in a different place that I was when we first started this ministry. I believe the wisdom that God has placed in me, the things that we've been through, it's like it's almost fashioned us for this time. So if that's you and you, you, know, you can help in any way, um, you can just sign up and my wife will contact you, will contact you. Um, anybody online that desires to do that, some may say, well, I'm not there you know, in person, but I do want to help. Maybe you can do something on our social media platforms. You can help me decide. You can, there's many things you can do from a distance. That's the beauty of technology. So we want to be just the creator. We're looking for the creatives as well. I sense just strong creatives that God is going to begin to bring. Just the witty inventions and the ideas to do ministry on such a different level. And we're going to see things manifest in such a great way. And so, um, man, okay, I got I to go. I'm about to go somewhere else with this. So if that's you and you desire to do that, we ask that you sign up. Also, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. We call it opportunity for prosperity time. Amen. Let's celebrate. Praise God. So online, we don't have it here. We'll be doing more, setting up more, and we'll be getting some other things together. We want to set an atmosphere. This atmosphere, we want to charge with the presence of God, charge with the faith of God, the love of God. Excuse me. And so at this time, you desire to sow. There's some information coming up on your screen. There's a QR code you can scan. It'll take you to a secure page on our website. Uh, for those that are local, we also have um, our Cash App, Venmo accounts. Um, you can go on to spiritoffire.us, spiritoffire.us, and sow that way as well. If you desire to sow um, through cash or check, you know, I know hardly anybody do ch- does checks anymore. Some still do, though. Some still do. So if you desire an envelope, amen, amen. If you desire and need an envelope, let's go ahead and get an envelope um, for those that desire to sow that way. Amen. And so we don't sell your information to third parties, nothing like that. Amen. And so we pray for God's best upon you. We pray for the hundredfold return. We declare and decree that you're out of debt, all needs are met, that you have plenty more to put in store. We declare overflow and increase over your life in Jesus' name. And the church say, amen. Amen. Can y'all give me a little music as we self-praise God? And uh, we're going to go ahead and let you guys go for today. Thank you that the angels of God are in camp around about us to keep us, to protect us in all our ways, that no evil plague will come to our dwelling. Nothing evil shall happen unto us. We thank you for long life that you satisfy us with it. We live long and strong and we prosper in all that we do. We thank you for your peace, which passes all understanding and guards our hearts and our minds through and by Christ Jesus. We bless you and we thank you for it now. In Jesus name and everybody shout amen. Amen. On the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus.